So this week I've been focusing on different mental health disorders and talking about the different symptoms and things like that. But when it comes to mental illness, I have one really big pet peeve. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And welcome back to another week where I'm talking about mental illness and different diagnoses, all right? And yesterday, I asked you to comment on my Instagram post and let me know which diagnosis you would like me to talk about, what you would like to be educated about or what you think other people should be more educated about. There was a lot of great answers and I'm definitely stockpiling them so now I know what kind of content that you want. But today's topic actually actually comes from one of my favoritest, most loyal subscribers. So me and this subscriber, we don't always agree on things, but I do really appreciate how she is always more than willing to leave honest feedback, and she's also more than happy to share her experience with others, or reach out and talk to others, or let them reach out to her, so she could share her experience and help some other people. So I love you, girl, you're awesome. So this woman is Psychedelic Feline, and after reading all the comments on my Instagram post, she said this. From reading comments, I think it would be helpful to make a video to help understand actual mental illness and words that are thrown around so casually. Example, anxiety versus feeling anxious, depression versus feeling depressed, people claiming OCD when they're just a bit anal or a perfectionist, and bipolar versus everyday normal fluctuations in mood or weather. So yes, 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 I've been waiting. Like one of the reasons I started this channel obviously was to decrease the stigma. And I've been waiting to make this video because because, like these are actual mental illnesses and there's so many people who just throw these words around all willy-nilly and the problem with this is is that it really dilutes the subject when everybody uses these terms when someone actually has this diagnosis people are like okay well do they just say they have OCD or do they just like to keep things in a nice place? Like, you know what I mean? So I think it's important as part of decreasing the stigma and increasing awareness, we, we, we choose our words wisely and we're careful to not just throw these words around. So yes, first off, there's a difference between being depressed or being like sad or bummed out. Now, I do wanna make it very clear, like depression can come in certain periods of your life. So if, say for example, you had a bunch of life cir circumstances, maybe a death in the family, and then you lost your job, and then you had a breakup, and all these other things. This can spiral you into a depression, but it's not this uh, kind of mental chemical imbalance. It's based on life circumstances. I've talked about that a lot in other videos. This is something that is a little bit easier to climb out of. Like people who have this other type of depression, where it's because their brain isn't creating the proper neurotransmitters, it's much, much different. But the point I'm trying to make here is like, don't keep using words like depressed because you're just a little bummed out that your favorite sports team lost. Or don't say that you're depressed because your favorite Hollywood couple, you know, broke up or something like that. Like, although these things may mean a lot to you, I seriously doubt that you have difficulties getting out of bed in the morning or going to work because you're just so broken up about it. Next up, maybe you're stressed or worried, but you're not anxious, you're not having anxiety. This is much different. Everybody gets worried, everybody gets this kind kind of nervous feeling, like before they publicly speak and things like that. Anxiety, clinical anxiety is debilitating. It is difficult to do things. It can hinder your quality of life. You might not be able to leave your house. You might not be able to go to work. You might not be able to go to social gatherings and situations. It's more than just being uncomfortable. It's completely avoiding things and you're not able to live your fullest amazing life when anxiety is just weighing you down constantly. So like when something's coming up and you're just like, oh, this gives me anxiety, like calm down with that because it's really diluting the word. Next up is probably the, the one that's thrown around more than anything else, and that's OCD. Like, this is the one that really bothers me. A show that I used to get into a lot was called Obsessed, and it's actually the original show in which uh, Hoarders was founded upon. So some of you might watch that show, Hoarders, but there was a show called Depress, and I watched it, and I'm like, man, OCD is rough. Like, it is, like, if you know somebody with legit OCD, like, 
it, it is difficult. It is very difficult because it is like these compulsions and you will get intense anxiety if you don't do certain rituals or certain things. So just because you like to, you know, make sure that this is straight and this is straight or your, your house is nice and neat, like these are just things. You're a clean person, congratulations. You might be a neat freak, but this is not OCD. Like if there is something out of place, can you not sleep at night? Okay, if you don't do a certain ritual, can you not perform other tasks? Like people with OCD, like I can't even imagine, like part of addiction is very obsessive and compulsive, but from what I've seen with people with diagnosed OCD, it is nowhere near what they go through. So it breaks my heart when I see people who are just like, I like to keep my pens on this side of my desk. I'm really OCD about it. Like you need to knock that stuff out. So next is bipolar. Oh, I'm. I'm so bipolar, I'm bipolar. No, okay, listen, our moods are constantly changing. They're constantly changing. Uh, one thing that I like about meditation is it relates it to kind of like what psychedelic fe uh, feline said, like it's kind of like the weather, okay? Depending on your day, depending on your circumstances, your moods can fluctuate, okay? But like, it's not bipolar, okay? Bipolar is another very difficult mental illness that people struggle with and you need to really realize that. Like people who reach these manic states and they do things that they wouldn't normally do. And they have these grandiose ideas and they, they think that they're untouchable and invincible and things like that. They, a, a lot of people like with mania, but more so with hypomania, like they get themselves in very dangerous situations. And then worst of all, when it comes to that, like the crash, that depression that comes along with it is very, very rough. For some people with bipolar disorder, this depression is worse than people who have just, you know, a major depressive disorder. So like, no, you're just having some mood fluctuations. It's not bipolar, okay? And last but not least, addict. Addict, addict, addict. Like, this is something like, man, like, okay, so as a YouTuber, as somebody, you know, trying to grow on Instagram and stuff, I research. I research different keywords and phrases and, and hashtags and stuff. And like, when I was looking up the word addict, like, you just see so much nonsense on there. Like, oh, I'm a clothes addict, I'm a coffee addict, I'm this addict, I'm that addict. And I'm like, what? What? Like, I get it, I get it. And like, trust me, I don't mean to be all snowflakey about this stuff, but mental illness, like, that's my thing. And like, you know, it, it's very difficult seeing people just tossing this word around, like, addiction is insanity like when you say like oh yeah i'm such a i'm such a shoe addict right like have you ever not bought your chil your child clothes or food so you can get shoes right or like oh i'm such a coffee addict have you ever stolen from your parents in order to get coffee but like addict is something that's thrown around a ton you know and i i get it like a lot of people doing this and this is the thing this is why i make these videos it's like no a lot of people aren't doing it in a malicious way they don't mean any harm by it, but I have this channel to try to educate people and let you know like, hey, this is kind of hurting the issue. Like this is kind of hurting what we're trying to do with mental health and mental health awareness and all that kind of stuff because people just keep throwing these words around. The more we use it, the less these words mean. So if you think about it, if we quit using these words so, so, so much, when you find out somebody's actually OCD or bipolar, you're like, oh wow. You have a you have, you actually have that diagnosis because it's not being used every other five minutes, right? So like we gotta look at other social topics that are in our environment right now, like. If you are a, you know, uh, just for example, like a white guy, I'm actually half African American for those of you who didn't know. Like, imagine like a, a Caucasian person going up to, you know, an African American person saying, oh yeah, man, I know the struggle. I, I know, I, I, I get it. Like, no, you don't. Like you might've gone through struggles, but it's completely different. Or even better yet, it'd be like me as a male, like if my girlfriend was going through, you know, her menstrual cycle or something like that, I like, started to be, you know, Know, talking about that but like and she gets cramps i'm like oh yeah i got a cramp the other day like no or like if somebody went through child labor and they were talking about how painful and hard and difficult that was or the nine months of carrying a baby i'm like oh yeah one time i like twisted my back like what what like 
as a person, like you get offended by it. Or like think about a cancer patient who's like going through chemo and just constantly sick and dealing with all that stuff, worrying about life and death. And then they go through chemotherapy and you're like, oh yeah, I used to throw up a lot when I had the flu. Like it's it seems really insensitive. And that's why we gotta talk about this stuff with mental illness. Like, so do me a favor, do me a favor. Like, please share this video, educate people, let people know like, hey, you gotta kind of be careful with that stuff because mental illness is a very serious, serious thing, all right? But anyways, again, thank you so much to Psychedelic Feline for suggesting this topic. I've been meaning to make this video for a really long time, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Go ahead and click that around subscribe button. And a big thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And if you would like to join and support the channel on Patreon, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Watch how you're throwing around words, and I'll see you next time.